Jokin hits the queen on the end. Ludo does not have the best hand. I mean, he never did, but he doesn't hit the diamonds, and I don't know if he's going to get a fold here if he bluffs. Tonka is a bigger Raptor fan. Like, Tonka's legitimate Raptor fan. Goes to matches, like, middle of the season. Has always been a fan, so I'm def I'm just like a very passive, like, hop on the bandwagon when hype is real and when it's not, like, not pay attention. And to legitimate fans of teams like that can rub them the wrong way because i don't know i haven't like earned the happiness or something i'm not sure how that works <laughs> it seems to be a thing um so yeah just a word of caution that the only team out there where i would consider myself like a real dedicated fan would be tottenham spurs rest of the teams i kind of just tune in montreal may be actually pretty close I sweat the Montreal scores quite a bit, so... Other than that, though, nothing, really. <sighs> NBA Championship or NBA Finals? That's it, man. That's the one. Thank you. Been pretty impressed with Ludo. His plays feel very solid to me. Ludo's great at poker, man. The thing with Ludo as well is like the impression I had of Ludovic Gaelic Ludo was that he was like a crazy player, like very aggressive, very creative, insane moves, played high stakes, and I think that was that was like true a long time ago. But now I think he's like toned it back to where he's really in line and smart and has it together, really knows what he's doing. So, yeah, I think he's a crusher, but he has a very aggressive uh, image and, like, uh, demeanor over the long run, I guess. Miguel raises. Jonathan's going to call on the small blind with the ace-queen, and we're going to go to a flop here. Jonathan in a bit of trouble for now. Has 30% to win the hand. Let's see what happens. Ace, seven, seven. Jonathan has got the best of it, man. Flop in the ace. Miguel hates to see this flop. Doesn't have an ace in his hand, and Jonathan can have it. Jonathan also could have more sevens than Miguel, although it's pretty equal. But still, like, you're losing to any ace, any seven. If you bet here, you're trying to get called by king high or, like, smaller pairs, basically. It's just annoying. Are you old enough to remember seeing Jordan ever? I was 36, so I uh, got him in my sports youth prime. Yes, but I think I got him when he came back to basketball. I was a big um, Space Jam fan. I was really young. I'm 28, though. So like, I think I was really young when he officially retired for the second time. Better 1.5 million. Whoa, raising chips coming out here for Jonathan. Whoa. I am surprised. Raised to 6 million. Looks like he's interested in getting this in here, actually. I guess he's saying, like, okay, let's do this. If you have a 7, I lose. Uh, but I want to get it in with ace jack, ace 10, ace 9, ace 8, ace 6, ace 5, ace 4, ace 3, ace deuce, something like that. Not sure about the raise, to be honest. Yeah, I don't know if I, I don't know if I like it either. It's because it's like. It's really tough to get paid from any worse hands, and you're really not protecting from very much at all. But let's see what Miguel elects to do here. Whoa, chips are being cut. Jonathan has made a move that is working. He's getting some value. Whoa. There's only 12.3 million left. He folds. Oh, that was close. That was close. All right, Jonathan. Friend of the stream. Picking up some chips. Nice hand. Nice hand. We're still at 30, dude. We're playing at 24. We need to eliminate six people to go... 
through to be finished our day four coverage and only have the final table left. Telling story, Ace Ace Full, Full Dot Ace King. Uh, no. <laughs> it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work, man. Stacks are too short. <laughs> Ace King is getting in there. But yeah, I think, Ed, you pick out a good bluff hand here, there, like 9 8 suited. Problem is just how hard it is to have, like, 9 8 suited. Check raise bluff. Like, it's just not a very common thing, so. Miguel losing that pot on 18.3 million, but doesn't lose a ton. Gregory, 48 million chips here for Gregory. Come on, man. I like the style of Gregory. I feel like I'm back home. And it's just like an ex-hockey player that's now a hockey dad, you know? That's what I, that's what I feel about Gregory. Widow folds. Joking with the ace of diamonds four. And KO series, we've got more PLO starting. What do we have left in the highlight here today? An hour 25, hour 20 or so. Pulls around to Andres in the big blind with 62 million, cutting out some chips. And a call, which you expect. I mean, hey, Jack-10, offsuit, closing the action, get to see three cards. You're in there, for sure. Queen-9-7, Andres flops an open-ender. Gregory does not like this flop, has missed, does not have a pair. Uh, it's a flop that can hit his opponent quite a bit, so check-check on the flop. I think it's totally good and normal. Turn is a three of clubs. What do you think of Galphon's challenge so far? How did he do today? Did he win money, or are you still playing, or...? Okay, nice. He's up a little bit today. Looks like 45k. Yeah, good. Good. I'm, uh... I hope he is successful, you know? I think it's a really cool challenge for poker. I'm a party poker guy, so obviously, like, I'm not doing any commentary or, or like, trying to promote it because it is a promotion for a run at once. But I'm also a poker player, too, and I just hope him to be... Hope he's successful, dude, you know? I think it's a great idea and good for the game. He was up 100k if Eddie playing well. Okay. So it's, you know, up five buy ins and now he's up. Now he's up two buy ins. Like, he's still crushing. You know, it's still a good day. On just with a well-timed bluff. Did he bluff the Jack-10 there? There you go. Yeah, going to work against the Ace-King, so we continue on. Continue moving in the tournament here. Miguel folds the 5-3. Gregory lets it go. Ludo with the Queen and the Queen here. Under the gun, plus two. Going to raise it up to 1.7 million. Let's see if there's anyone out there picks up a hand that can give him some action. It's not a slam dunk. As I am going to register this 55 KO series because I'm running out of time on this one. So add another table. Pulls around to the big blind. William with the jack six suited. I think a playable hand, worth calling. I mean, if you know your opponent had queens, you might just give it a skip. Then again, you probably just give it a call, try and flop two pair of a flush and make all the money against queens, you know? <laughs> like, knowing your opponent's hand is good. It's worthwhile. In William's spot, what I'm saying is I think it's fine to call and see a flop. <laughs> the flop is king, queen, jack. Ludovic Agailic has flopped the middle set and William... Has bottom pair with a pair of jacks here. So this is interesting. Mm. 
Yeah, Rob, unfortunately, you're not allowed to play on Party Poker in Florida. There's some unregulated sites in Florida. I'm not the expert on that, but there's a lot of American poker players here on Twitch that would be able to give you better advice as to where they play and stuff, but Party Poker is not available in the U.S., except for New Jersey for now, unfortunately. Tuna Teeny dropping 100 bits. Thank you very much, Tuna Teeny. That's the first bits of the day, I think. You are bit lord of the day, pinned on top of the stream. Thank you very much for that. Bet a call, okay. Deuce of Diamonds. Action on Ludo. Who I assume just wants to continue here with middle set. Yeah, that's a really good hand. So keep it going, I would guess. Three and a half million. Three point four million bet. He's gonna get the job done here. No way we'll concede. Just got the pair. If Party Poker comes to PA, I'm definitely switching from stars from Ben White. Cheers, man. I appreciate that. I don't know if it is. I don't have any updates on the US situation, but uh in Pennsylvania. But hopefully. That'd be cool. Ludo takes it down on the turn. 81.2 million. That's a heap of chips. You start with a million, right? So it's basically 81 souls in a stack. <laughs> 81 souls in those chips, man. Excluding his own 80 dreams that showed up and played and had died. It's a lot. Eighty souls. That's the one, man. Gregory under the gun with the ten of spades, three of clubs. What has it been now? Over a decade since online poker has been outlawed in the U.S., it feels like the fight to get it back has been going on forever. Beginning to wonder if it ever will. Yeah, man, I really feel as if the whole world feels that. <laughs> it's just painfully slow, and there's there's not enough people really putting in very, very strong efforts to make it happen. Um, there just isn't the lobbying power and money behind it that need to be behind it for it to happen, you know? At least quickly. But, I mean, let's just pretend that it was a completely um, transparent and open legal system and lobbying dollars didn't count, it's obviously logical that online poker should be available for consumers to play in America. You just need good consumer protections and you need to ensure that sites know who they're providing the service to and that they can you know, show the paper trail for where money's moving to prevent money laundering. Like, you know, it just needs, it just needs to be above board and, uh, and it should exist. It's just like when are... When are people going to make the regulations uh, necessary to allow it to exist in a regulated sense? So, yeah. So, a couple of your short-term goals for 2020. don't really have much, to be honest, man. I don't feel as if I need them short-term right now. Ace-queen, ace-queen! Chop it up in the 320. Chaos series. Because my... My situation is like very, it's very self-explanatory. It's like uh, streaming. Well, in life, it's my relationship, my personal health, wellness, um, quality of life, you know? So like health, fitness, relationship, investment of time and, and effort. And then in career, it's like stream, as much as I can, be innovative, make cool ideas, cool things, uh, grow my channel, do as much as I can to help people on Twitch and YouTube and broader social media, and help Party Poker team online and Party Poker as a whole as much as I can to be as effective as possible at growing the site. And uh, that's it. 
That's it, man. So like, I don't have specific like targets or process oriented goals for myself because I don't know. I just feel like I'm, I'm in it. And I feel good. Like I, I don't feel like I'm lacking any motivation, <clears throat> or that I necessarily need to track where I'm going because I think I know pretty clearly. <coughs> Raised to 1.7 million for Jonathan. Gregory is going to call. King, Queen, Jack. Queen. I'm all in. Oh my God, man. Ace five against sixes, bro. They hit the, uh, they hit the trips of the turn. Unfortunately, I'm going to re-enter that 320 KO series. So I've clicked re-enter. We will see if uh, it pops up. There we go. All right, <clears throat> good. All right, Ed K, cheers, man. Thanks for hanging out here, dude. <clears throat> Gregory with the mystery card. Are we gonna get a chance to see it or is it just gonna be Jonathan's pot in the end? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Jonathan Betts, 1.6 million. And a fold from Gregory. There it is. Okay. Jonathan wins the pot. 6.2 million coming his way. That'll probably take him up just shy of 3 million. No, actually, that was the correct total, actually. Two, 27 million. Wasn't added on top of that. It was already there. All right, looks like a deck change or something like that. Looking at the table. It's getting serious now. Like, not a lot of banter, but, you know, there's 30 or 29 left. Playing for heaps of money. You know, the, the situation is intense, man. I'll give you guys a, a face shot as the, the old plug goes through here. But thank you guys very much for hanging out and supporting the show today. Hope you've enjoyed it. We're going to be doing final day coverage tomorrow morning before the online poker as we get a four bet with Jax through. Um, and then Saturday morning. So we should finish this tournament off in the next two days, which is pretty cool. We'll have a champion, get to sweat the final table and all the all the action. So should be good, man. All right, let's go back. Let's get back to it. Joking with the Jack-5 under the gun. Nope. That's why I like tables with Daniel or Phil. Someone is always upset or talking shit from Phobe Shiwan. Yeah, man. The thing about like uh, <laughs> uh, about those tables, when the cash games are on, like people that play televised cash games know, okay, this is a big game for entertainment, and I'm never going to get to play in these games if I'm not entertaining. So like people know to play up their emotions to a degree so that's entertaining for the average person to watch, you know, and bring out those parts on the self for the show. Tournaments are a little bit different, especially when you're talking a live stream that isn't going out to like a whole country. Um, you're a little bit more self-interested in some spots. So, but I'm with you too. Like it's so much more fun to watch banter and blow ups and like personalities that we all know and love from poker. It's really enjoyable, of course. So a raise and a three bet from Gregory in the small blind back on Miguel, who doesn't seem the type to want to let go easily, but eights is quite a strong hand as well. Eights, I think, is a reasonable hand to actually go all in pre here. Wow. Just a cool so much and he calls. This is interesting. Okay, so we're going to a flop here. Thank you. 
three, a couple of clubs. And ace high flop, that's it, man. Sorry. Send your friends some money. Good to go. We need more Kasuf table talkers. He was a big table talker, man. Big name in the poker world as well. Sometimes it's nice when there's no sound. Feel your heartbeat. Can you feel it, man? Imagine I turned up the volume so loud you could hear my heartbeat. Probably possible. Probably possible. I don't know, though. I don't know if it would be possible. <laughs> I miss seeing Durr on TV cash games. Just found it highly entertaining to see his opponent squirm. See, Durr is such an interesting one, man. Because Tom Dwan wasn't particularly outspoken at the table. Like, he sometimes was. But his legend was built up through playing high-stakes games online. And that was enough to be a TV superstar. But, like, Durr wasn't super talkative at the table, was he? Which is why, to me, the mystique is really interesting on him. I mean, of course, he was a wonder kid, like, amazing poker player, played incredibly aggressively, and, like, it's interesting, but, yeah. His style, I guess, was the, was the, was the feature. The interesting thing. William, uh, William is going to raise it up to 1.6 million. And now Jokin with Ace Jack in the big blind. He's got 42 million. The standard move here is to move all in, uh, which is obviously not going to be great for him if he does. But you got to think his opponent doesn't have that many chips. Ace Jack is quite strong. Uh, and there's 3.6 million in the middle right now. All in and a call. All right, here we go. Ace queen against ace jack. All in here. Twenty nine left. We could be down to twenty eight if Jokin can spike a jack here to win this pot. I think about an hour left in coverage here. Yeah, about an hour left in the day. Two a flop. Seven six four with two diamonds. Pretty good flop for Williams. Got to be pretty comfortable on that flop. We can get a nice sweaty card on the turn. Three opens up some chop outs now. 10% of the time, it's going to be a split pot with a five. Three is not enough, though. William is going to double up. 27.6 million is the pot. So that will be William Stack going forward in this tournament. Joking now down on 29.4. All right. I heard Durr got the bulk of his bankroll from La Liberté. Yeah, so there used to be some pretty big online cash games, I think, with Guy La Liberté. But I don't know the specifics. Like, I don't know how... Uh, I don't know who won what and how much and, like, and all that. I'm not sure how it worked. So it's interesting to think about.
Continuing on here. We're on break in the uh, tournaments as well, actually, the KO series. But we will be firing up more full session pretty soon. So there's a 320 and a 55 PLO, which are in late registration. I'm going to register them with an hour left. When we start up the stream, we'll be on four tables if we still have these other two KO series. Uh, but then we're also going to play a 530 Eat Max Turbo tonight, which will be fun. So $530 buy-in. That will be no limit. So, yeah, it'll be fun, man. Be good. Thank you guys for hanging out, though. I appreciate you spending your time here and chilling on our no-delay stream as we get the uh, the break time boost from the other streamers on no delay. What's up? What's up? Yo, no delay, chat. Me and you right now. Jokin is going to limp at the small blind. Jonathan checks in the big blind with ace eight. So we're going to a flop. Selling any action tonight? I don't think so, with two, uh, because I just don't know exactly what my schedule is, and if it is, it'd be like one tournament, you know. When you win a pot, Jamie, when you're streaming, how are you able to look back at the hand when the other players doesn't show their hand, yet you're still able to see it? You can just click last hand replayer and see it there from MMB. Everyone can see it. There's not like a special setting for team online or anything. It's just in the last hand replayer. That's where you can see it. Joking bets, and Jonathan here is gonna feel pretty good. Middle pair, right? Uh, and an ace high kicker. Gotta feel good about his hands. But probably doesn't want to raise. Probably just wants to call, right? So we are going to see some call chips enter the middle here. Seven of spades in the turn. Playing today, I am Goobster. Yep, I am playing today, man. I am playing right now on the side, actually, but we'll be streaming it later on tonight too. And Jonathan uh, thinking here. Check, check. Okay, to the river. Doesn't want to value bid or protect or anything. So Jokin has a few outs. Jack is not one of them. Jack of clubs here on the end. Now, does Jokin go for a bluff? It's the only chance he has of winning the hand. Or is he just completely given up here? Giving off a bit of facial expression. So I always think this is like a guard down sort of situation. When you give off a tell like this. I mean, Cranberries is seeing it. Right? And if I'm Jonathan, I'm thinking like, well, this is not an expression you would make uh, very often with a good hand. You know, like the confused kind of look going on here. So I'm curious. Uh, and he is loading up a bet. And it folds. Interesting. Okay, Jonathan Folds doesn't see the same thing I see. I, I'm i surprised because I think when when there's a facial reaction like that, to me, it's like letting the guard down. I think you're more protected if you're actually strong there. So it's kind of interesting. But nonetheless, you know, third pair, let's it go. Move on. <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll sell some this weekend, though. We'll sell some for Sunday and stuff. We'll be playing some big events. Exciting day coming up on Sunday. Exciting day coming up. All right, I'm back in action on the felt as well, getting my tables going in the KO series. On 71K in the 55 uh, KO series event 21, and then in the 320, I am 
on starting stack. So nothing crazy yet. Well, I'll try and build something for you guys by the time we start playing online in about an hour from now. There is 29 players left in the tournaments. Hail Bob. Welcome, by the way. So uh, this is day three coverage, and it ends when we get down to 24. Exclamation mark payouts for the full payouts details. Tomorrow, we're going to start that final day of coverage. So there's about... In total, I think there's 10 hours left in this tournament of coverage. 10 hours left. There it is. So 45,000 guaranteed. And when we get down to 24, the bubble here, it'll be 50K starting tomorrow. Miguel is all in for 14 million here. No one's going to call. All right. All right. First time chatting to you live. The swim dude. What's up, bro? The no delay is the dream, man. We can have real chats. We can talk like like just normal people. It's, uh, it's a nice thing, man. So cheers. What's up? Welcome to the live version. Are you playing a little bit tonight, swim dude? Or are you just watching? What's going on? Is that a Bahamas hat? It is a Bahamas hat. Looks good, dude. I like it. All the above, my man. All right, there it is. Well, good luck, bro. Good luck. I'm same with you. The ante is the same as the big blind. It is, yes, three-piece meal. So this is a big blind ante, or is it a button ante? I think it's a button ante. Or basically one player at the table pays the, the, the ante instead of everyone putting in small amounts every hand, and sometimes people forget, and sometimes you have to wait, etc. Greg, he's going to raise it up to 2.3 million. As our blinds are 500k, 1 million, bro. Such a good level. It's easy to do math. 500k, 1 million. Gregory raises it to 2.3 million. Oh, I love this level. <laughs> yeah, only the button pays the ante. That's it. Yep. So it just goes around the table. And when you pay the ante, it doesn't count as a bet for you, right? So it's dead money. So none of the math changes for you. Um, and basically it just means you don't have to wait for everyone to ante up. So it, it became really popular in tournaments live, like literally three years ago. And now pretty much every tournament does it. It's just like, everyone loves it. It's so much faster. The dealers love it. It doesn't change the game at all. So it's good, man. It's good. We'd be playing tonight. I will. Yeah. I'm actually playing right now, but I will be streaming online tournaments soon in about an hour. Nice saying, Gregory. There we go. 2.3 million raise takes it down. 52.3 million there. Doesn't that mean, though, it's more important to defend your button? No, because the money isn't live. It's just dead in the middle. So you don't have any change of price. And it doesn't matter where the money in the middle or like originated. So you're not. It doesn't affect if you're priced in or not. It doesn't affect being like pot committed in any way. It's just dead money in the middle. Yeah. So it doesn't change anything. Three-piece mill. Anything new in your world or coming up? Nothing uh, Nothing too crazy, Swim Dude. Just keep on plugging away, man. I mean, I'm enjoying streaming some live poker. This is a new thing for me. Um, so the mix of live and online poker streams is fun. I'm having a good time doing it. And I'm excited to finish this tournament because a full main event... You know, by the time this is over, it will be five, six to nine hour streams that we've done. This is a lot of live poker, you know? <laughs> um, I'm excited to do some shorter events as well, you know? Like explore some of the new live poker stuff we could do, like shorter shorter days or even cash game streams, right? Uh, streaming those before we play tournaments. I'm really having fun, like, experimenting with this, man. So that's kind of thinking about that a lot. And KO series going on party poker right now. So like big tournaments, first series of the year. Hoping to get a title, of course. So today we're playing our first of four days straight. And then next week we're going to be Thursday to Sunday as well.
Is it big blind or button ante? I'm not sure, Toral, if it's a big blind or button ante. I don't know officially. But again, it doesn't change the math of the, the game in any way. It's just kind of like, instead of paying your antes every hand, you just play them once in orbit. Oh my god, William has a straight, man. And now they chop. Oh my god, William flopped the nuts, dude. William had a straight, and now they chop. Look what happened, William. No. Oh my goodness. That's not what you want to see, bro. Ace queen against ace king. I uh, I'm out. Can I re-enter? No, I can't. Okay, I'm out of the 320. It's okay. I can uh, get in the PLO soon, though. William just flopped the dream, bro, against Jokin's overpair, and uh, the king ends it. So, better four million here. Jokin feels good. I mean, has a straight. Um, I don't think there's much reason to raise here, to be honest. It's just probably a call and see a river. Yeah, there it is. Cheers, Killing Bird. Thank you, man. Good details on that. Jack on the end. Players do split the pot 50-50. I think this is going to be a bet from or a check from William, a bet from Jokin, a call from William, and a show it down chop. That's what I think, because William doesn't want to bet into potential full houses here, but his hand is very strong. It's hard to get called by worse hands by betting here, and Jokin, if it checks to him, he can be like, okay, I really don't think my opponent is betting or is checking full houses, in which case, like Queens is the best hand here at least or chopping at worst. So that's how. It would play out for me anyways, but let's see what happens. Maybe William wants to bet. I don't know. I would check call if I was William, and I would bet if I was joking. But the betting chips are coming out. 12 million. <gasps> wow. Okay. I mean, they chop, but like... Is Jokin going to fold? This is such a weird bet, man, because it's like a bluff. This 12 million bet is basically a bluff, and Jokin can have two pairs is the crazy thing here. It's like William is trying to bluff Jokin off a chop. I think. I don't, I don't even really know if William is value betting or, or bluffing off a chop. Do you guys know? What do you think? I'm not sure. He could fold. Jokin could fold. What do pairs check back flop? I mean, uh, King Jack, King 10, King 9 could all check back flop. I think all three of them. Honestly, King Jack is one of the best jacks to check back. Pretty reasonable. He folds. I mean, I mean, yeah. I don't know. Like, I would never expect William to ever bet a straight like that, ever. It doesn't make any sense to me. So, like, I understand what he's thinking. But, like, holy crap, William just bluffed his opponent off a chop, I think. But he might have value bet a hand to fold. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't understand. Merging, says Killing Bird. That's it, bro. It's got to be a merge. How long is left in the coverage, bro? Of today, we have 50 minutes. 50 minutes left in today. But then I will be restarting the stream and doing online poker for three, four hours, something like that. Um, so, yeah. Can't blame him. It sucks to call for just half the plot. Yeah, exactly. Stanky says swim, dude. That's a good descriptor, man. Rough one. Joking, looking down at the queen deuce coming off a tough pot. It's a tough one to, to stomach that. Folds. Andres with the nine of spades, eight of clubs. Uh, 
Is it up to two million? Okay. Already planned, buddy boss. When will I be streaming the online poker? In about an hour from now. You'll see it on here. In about an hour. I've already got uh, the 55 KO series going on. We're going to get in a 320 Pot Limit Omaha KO series, a 55 Pot Limit Omaha KO series, a 109 and an 11, a 530 and a 55, like a 530 and a 55. KO series, and that's the KO series schedule. And then I'll probably play uh, maybe Million Day One as well. Million Day One probably tonight too. Ludo is going to raise it up with the eight seven of diamonds under the gun. Is there a table boss abusing here? Not really, to be honest. Uh, Myth Pua, there isn't. That hasn't broken out as a concept of like someone taking it to the rest of the table. I don't think that's going to happen too much in this situation because of how good the players are. Ishaki's deuce holds. Come on, baby. Let's go. Bounty coming our way. I think the players are too good to let that happen. They're not going to let some player run over the table. Everyone's too experienced. And there isn't a clear enough chip leader to make it happen. Anyways, uh, Jonathan calls with the eights. Now to Gregory in the big blind, 6-5. There's 29 players left you can see in the top left. We're going to play till 24 today in this coverage. So we need to eliminate another five to make it to the final day of play. Queen 10 on nine on the flop. Ludo with the open ender. Jonathan with an underpair now isn't very happy. Uh, and a bad gut shot. And then Gregory has completely missed the flop. Completely. I like that party poker pop socket, though. You guys see that? That was fly. Party poker, hit me up with the pop socket, man. Please. <laughs> all right check check back on jonathan here with the eights i'm assuming it's just like giving up on a flop like this i would think uh such a scary flop for eights like no one's happy here check 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 to a turn deuce hearts okay gregory are you feeling devious with the six high or are you gonna give it up i would give it up personally but hey, man, you got to do you. I understand. Consideration is in right now from Gregory. Check. Okay. It's a pop socket. This thing in the back of your phone. See that? Allows you to hold it like this and spin it in your hands and stuff like that. Just much easier than just flat. Ludo's going to bet four and a half. With the bottom end open ender, and I think it's gonna go fold fold. Maybe, 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 maybe Jonathan can find a call here or continue, but I don't think so. Yeah, man, I think it's a fold and a fold. All right, yo, tough spot. What's up, tough spot, man? It's the tough spot time of day in the house. Good to see you, dude. We are final forty five minutes here, five players away from reaching the final day of coverage and then we also have 80,000 chips in a 55 KO series and a $41 bounty which is great and we've got more KO series coming tonight that's what's up man that's what we're doing that's the situation hanging out first day back on the stream since the Monday Tuesday Wednesday off stream work day kind of things that's it man Looking forward to the next four days of poker action. Joking with the three deuce under the gun is a garbo. 
It's a pretty looking hand, but I don't think playable with Jonathan Stack. He has 22 blinds, so yeah, he lets it go correctly, I think. Mark is out. And now William in the cutoff. Okay, two million. William raising it up to two. Gregory folds. Action on Ludo now with the sixes in the big blind. Pretty interesting hand here. So the big blind is a, in a million, right? So for Ludo, it's one million to call and see a flop. But William also started the hand with 34 blinds. So there's other options too. Here's a call though. We're going to go to a flop. Sixes against ace deuce. King nine three with one club. William has little bits of something here. Three to a straight, three to a flush, three to a straight flush, actually. Ludo has the equivalent of third pair. Probably doesn't love this situation, but doesn't hate it either. Uh, Karak 101 dropping the sub. Did I miss that, Karak? Did I miss the thank you on the sub? I think I did. Chat, did I say thanks to Karak? Am I an idiot? Welcome to the team, Karak. I really appreciate the support. Get some hearts on the chat for the new subscriber. Uh, where are we at on subs today, man? Nine subs today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Karak. I feel bad. Ace, queen, ace, nine. Oh, queen on the tyrant. Thank you. We were all in pre-flop, by the way, not on the flop. So I got it in good there. And we got another bounty. We might be salmon felt. Uh, William wins that pot, actually. There you go. I am Salmon Felt official confirmed chat. Salmon Felt official. There we go. Looking good, dude. Nice. Keep it going. Oh, no delay. Good, bro. You playing today? I am. Yep. We'll be playing tonight. Thanks again for the advice. Finally hit third in attorney for a 1.4K. Not a losing player after all. There you go, Chill Viper. Congrats, bro. Keep up the good work. We will be streaming some online poker tonight. Just sweating the live poker for a little bit more. The commentary is actually quite almost off here now. I wish I could have atmospheric sound for you guys all the, all the time, you know? Go in the cutoff, king and jack. But then it pops in like that. It's tough, man. Not that there's anything wrong with the commentary. It's great. It's just we're gonna talk over each other. It's tough to do. Miguel gonna raise it up. Oh no, never mind. They're just gonna shove. <laughs> Gregory on the dealer button looks down at a pretty hand, but not a hand he can play, given the all-in. Ludo on the small blind with the ace nine. By the book, it's a call. By the book, you're willing to gamble here. But what does Ludo think about the shover, Miguel? Does he think that he shoves enough hands? Ludo does go for the shove, 81 million. Jokin folds the king 10. We have an all-in situation. King Jack Ace 9 here. Ludo has the best of it. 58% we can see. All in situation. Nice, Jabodi. All right, man. Sorry, Carrick. Sorry again, man. We got sub hype coming in. MMB 2009 dropped the sub. Welcome to the team, MMB. Thank you so much for your support, my friend. Very much appreciate that. Hearts out in chat. Thank you, dude. Thank you, thank you. Ace high flop. This is looking good for Ludo. Still 9% for Miguel. Queen and only a queen will get it done. 9%. <gasps> Eight will not do it. GG to Miguel. The Spaniard going home in 29th position for $40,000, I believe. But we are down to 28. Just four away from making the final day of play. 
Goodbye, Miguel. Ludo stacks up the chips, continues to climb the leaderboard. 97 million chips. That means there's 96 souls, 96 dead dreams in that stack, and they all belong to Ludo. Can he capitalize? Can he go all the way? We'll find out. That's why we're here. That's why we're here, chat. That's what we're doing. Sweating it, dude. Checking out some interesting poker hands, man. Calling Ace Nine with SP SPR out of position? Nah. Yeah, no, I don't think you can call. Westy's good. I don't think you can call for the same reason Jabodi's saying, like. Well, he was all in, actually, for 14 blinds. So, there. yeah, you can't. I mean, you could call, but there's only one player behind, and the player behind doesn't have very many chips, so it makes no difference. Um, yeah. We'll be able to f see exactly. The player, the only player behind was in the small blind, or is in the small blind this hand. So we'll be able to see what their stack is, because I forget off the top of my head. 28 left of the field, four away from the final three tables. Gregory here with the 6-5. And is going to raise it up to 2,300. Little folds. Here's the stack. Yeah, so Jokin only had 23 million, right? This was the player left in the pot last hand. So Ludo couldn't call and fold the Jokin ever. So he just decided to go all in instead. That's that's what happened there. And I thought that was the case, but I wasn't sure. So. And now Jonathan in the big blind. Looking down at the Ace of Clubs, Three of Hearts, Friend of the Stream, Jonathan. Goes by Splash Cranberries. Will he call and see a flop? Does he want a three bet all in? That's a lot to risk. He just folds. Okay, interesting. Gregory's going to take it down with the Six Five of Hearts. And we move on. Not actually that tired, chat, but I may need a bit of caffeine, you know? I may need a quick bam. Pick me up. I got some meetings tonight, dude. In about five hours, I have a meeting, and we still got some online poker to play tonight, dude. It is a big old day. Andros under the gun with the 10 6 of diamonds. I don't know what the big blind stack was, but if he had more chips than Ludo, why risk your stack? He had less. Actually, Westy's good. So the big stack only had 20 million or so. The stack behind Ludo, Ludo had 85 million or whatever. And then the shover was all in for 13 million. So basically, there's only a 7 million difference or something like that. Which is why he just went for the shove. But I under, like, you know, let's say the person behind had 100 blinds. I agree with you then. Definitely, you know, shouldn't shove in that instance. But the person behind was really short. William's going to raise it up with the ace nine offsuit. Now Ludo looks down at ace ten of spades. And comes along for a call. As you do with a hand as strong as ace ten of spades. Can I ask why they usually think so long before they bet? They're considering a bunch of different strategy situations, basically, big dog. Like, figure they're trying to think about what the best way is to play it, given what their opponent knows and what their opponent thinks of them, um, and their overall strategy, which takes some just thought, you know? That's all. So raising a call, and now Mark... With ace four offsuit in the big blind. He's got 11 million chips here. So about 12 blinds. He just gives it a go. Let's it go. And we're going to go to a flop here. Ludo with a huge chip stack. 
eight three deuce with two spades this is a beautiful flop for ludo who we knew was already ahead but now is in such a great spot where he can play this aggressively if he chooses to he could also just call a c bet but let's see what william elects to do William is going to bet four million into about six and a half. What are your tips for keeping calm when losing on a four point five percent river constantly? You can't control your luck, so you're wasting your time and you're in a competition. You gotta beat your opponents, man. You gotta be better than them. And any time, any mental energy you spend on stuff you can't control, like your luck. You're losing to them. So don't let them win. Be a warrior, man. Be diligent. Focus on decisions. Screw the rest. You're in a competition. That one always gets me. It depends what kind of person you are, though. Different arguments are going to work for different people. That one gets me. Like, ah, I'm not going to let these fools beat me by getting down about a bad beat. I couldn't care less about the bad beat, man. Dust that dirt off my shoulder. I'm coming back at you. That's what I say internally, and it gets me, bro. It gets me going. I'm like, yeah, of course. Why would I ever waste any time? All these other guys are wasting time. That's where I'm winning, you know? So the five of the clubs on the turn doesn't change anything here. Does Ludo need to uh, do anything in the spot, or can he just check and try and get to the river? Check, check. Yeah, so he's just going to go to the river with his ace-10. Seven of spades on the end. William has ace-9. And I don't know if Ludo is going to be able to get any more money here from William. We can see he has the nuts. He has the best hands. But can he get a value bet? Philosopher Stone says, I think his hand is a bit too strong to check on the turn, to be honest, about Ludo's ace-10. I hear what you're saying. I get what you're saying there. Yeah. It's a good good take on it. William is going to check, and now Ludo needs to bet. Gets to bet, but also needs to bet. It's the rules with the best possible hand here on the river. So how much is he going to bet? Four million. Very small bet here. Four million into fourteen and a half. William sees the price, immediately asks how much. Immediately thinking about the hero call. <laughs> I think it's gonna come in, dude. I think I think Ludo's gonna get paid. Let's see. There's a live tournament. This tournament is late November twenty nineteen. This is the day three coverage. It's never been broadcast on Twitch before, so it's a new New broadcast here, but good fold, by the way, with the ace nine. So me and you are on no delay, but this tournament has already happened. I mean, that advice on tilt and dealing with luck was awesome. Thanks for that. No problem, K-Mac. No problem, yo. The rich get richer, man. Ludo's got a huge stack, and I really hope he does well tomorrow. I don't know where he finishes in this event. I'm not sure, but... An entertaining player to watch. Very good player. William folds the ace-6 offsuit onto the gun. Gregory, go look down at the king-5 and surely let it go. Tilt is something I need to work on big time. Yeah, it's a lot of practice, man. It's a lot of practice. I think realistic expectations of what poker is really helps as well, like really understanding 
how variable some of these situations are, um, you know, and how small of an edge a thin as edge is, how close it is to just a pure coin flip sometimes, and how you're building a small edge over a long period, not over the short run. So yeah, I think that really helps, but like practice helps too, man. I wanted to be a pro golfer as a kid, so I, I've had practice because golf mental game is basically the same as poker. Like you make a decision and then you're on to your next decision after you've made that decision. And there's no point in thinking about the bad shot you just hit or you're such an idiot for putting yourself in a bad spot here or I wish it would have done something different. Like you made the best decision at the time and you move on to the next situation to make the best decision and execute as best you can. So it's the same in poker and I'm assuming it's the same in sport, uh, in all sorts of sport. So I've been practicing since I was like 10, 11 years old, being good at that system. And it's how I think today about it. So, yeah. Gregory under the gun with a 10, eight offsuit. No thanks for Gregory. No dice, no mas. Shocking in the hijack. 24 bigs, queen jack. Oh man, I want table sounds. Dang it. They're joking. This is a thing. This is a moment in time. This is a razor. Razy daisy. All day with a queen jack suited. 2.1 million. Jonathan with the queen five is going to fold. Yep. Yep, 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 it's a folds. Mark folds. Andrus in the small blind with these two suited. Interesting. So he's immediately asking for the stack because that's a very important consideration here. Andrus wants enough room to where he can re-raise and fold to an all-in. He probably doesn't like it nearly as much as if, if he has to call an all-in. And he's almost in that spot right now. It's right on the edge. So let's see. All right. Here we go. Uh, three bits to six and a half million. And here we are. Here we are. Back on Joken, who is Queen Jack suited. Now can almost call here. Maybe he could call. It was a very suited, connected, beautiful hands against a seemingly aggressive player. I mean, we've seen him play some aggressive hands. I don't know if Jokin knows that. So let's see what Jokin elects to do. I'm hoping to see a flop, and those are calling chips right there. We're going to a flop, 15 million in the middle, and we can see Jokin only has 17 million left. That's it. Ten, seven, three, one spade. But this hand is not necessarily over. Neither player has anything. Andrew still has the best hand. He has the pre-flop aggression lead. But does he bet? He is going to bet. Four million it is. And now Jokin has another situation. Jokin has three to straight flush. Three to a royal flush, actually. It's very cheap. Getting five to one odds and needs about 18%. But he does let it go. There you go. Andres with a good bluff. A couple questions in the chat here. Hey, Jamie, I'm organizing a men's trip to Edinburgh. Got any advice about what area to stay in? The trip will be more having a good time and drinking, less about cultural things. Maybe you can help. Um, so I am not the best person to ask. There's going to be better advice on TripAdvisor, YouTube, YouTube vlogs and stuff like that because I live in a house here, so I haven't seen any hotels. I think like... Newtown and Old Town have good drinking. There's a sort of party street. Probably Old Town uh, Hotel would be good. Anywhere near the center, Newtown, Old Town, there's going to be action. There's going to be pubs. There's going to be fun spots. Um, so you pretty much can't go wrong because it's not very far, man. Like all the spots aren't very far apart. But I'm also not the best person to ask. Have a great time, though. Hair of Vorgand. 
It's not actually that big, the city center, so you can get around pretty easily. Okay, I'll get in between, but this time off two and plus one. The more we reflect, the worse that check of the turn feels. 19 now, but only ace high. If you break, OP makes a C better than the flop and checks the turn to you. I believe check the heck. There's a blunder, I believe, question mark. Well, I don't think I agree with you, Philosopher Stoned, but I respect your analysis nonetheless. I think ace high and gets a C bet and a check on the turn is going to win a decent amount of the time, actually, like a decent percentage. Right. And by betting, how many wor how many better hands are you getting to fold? Yeah, so Almost none. Almost none. You're going to have to apply two streets of pressure to get better hands to fold, probably. So, but I, I hear the analysis, but I think has a bit more showdown value than I think you're giving it credit. And I think our bluff is going to be a little bit less effective than you're giving it credit as well. That's my take on it. But I like you're doing the analysis and thinking about it nonetheless. And I take your opinion on board. Ray is from Jokin with the Queen Jack. Andres calls with the 8-7. And Jokin is going to take a Jokin. Nice and No, actually he's not. We're going to a flop. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> 28 left. The hand's not over, Jamie. Whoa, Jokin has the nuts. Andres has an open handed straight draw, but Jokin has the nuts with Queen Jack here. No one has a diamond. Good flop, man. Good flop. Let's see if it pays off. Counting out 4,400,000 chips. It is a relatively large bet, but makes sense given how connected it is. Now action is back on Andres, who has 70 million and has a tough decision. The bottom open ender. So it's a bad straight draw, right? A jack or a six will give Andres a straight. But if it's a diamond, it might not win. And we can see, of course, that he's not going to win if he hits either of those because he's up against a higher straight. So he makes the right fold. He makes the right fold. No problem, Philosopher's Stone. James, will you be playing online tournaments upon the conclusion of this event? I will. I'm playing an online tournament right now, actually. But I will be streaming it also in about 20 minutes, a little bit longer than 20 minutes. We'll be live with the tournament action, playing some KO series tonight. So, yeah, looking forward to it, man. It's not the nuts. True. There is slightly stronger nuts, but you get what I'm saying, El Jefe. You get what I'm sa saying, man. You know what I'm talking about. Joking. Under the gun with the King Queen. Suited going to raise it up to 2.1 million. Back in action. Has played a lot of pots, but unfortunately hasn't come out with too many more chips. Has been kind of stagnant. Win loss, win loss, win loss type deal. Trying to break out. Do a bigger stack. 28 left still in the tournament. I assumed we were playing down to 24, but maybe it starts with 28 tomorrow. There's not that much time left. Let's see what happens. Ludo in the big blind with a terrible Jack Deuce of Diamonds, but it is suited. And he does close the action, so actually I think it's a call. If it's off suit, I fold. If I'm suited, I call. Is it normal to be afraid the first time at the table? Of course. Sensei Ancho. You don't think I was terrified the first time at a poker table, man? Oh, my God. I was shaking. I couldn't put out a big blind. It's just, oh. I couldn't, I couldn't handle it, man. The pressure was too high. I was seeing $100 pots, $200 pots, $500 pots. That's real money, man. Of course that's crazy. But it just becomes more natural over time. And it becomes less scary and... People generally are really helpful at the card room. They'll help you figure out the rules. It's all good, man. Took me like two months before I used to get playing without getting nervous shaking. Yeah, man. It's nerve wracking. It's not normal.
<laughs> so scared to make a mistake and give off the tell. Yeah, when is when you start playing for a while, you realize that everyone you're playing against isn't very good, to be honest. So like, you have nothing to worry about. But when you first go, you are worried, and you know it's understandable. But there is nothing to be worried about, and you figure that out pretty quickly as well. It's like ah. Oh. These fish, you know. <laughs> Jokin hits the queen on the end. Ludo does not have the best hand. I mean, he never did, but he doesn't hit the diamonds, and I don't know if he's going to get a fold here if he bluffs. So let's see what's going to happen here. This is probably going to be Jokin winning a pot, I'd say. Hey, DW Stevie, drop with a 15-month resub. Welcome back to the team, Stevie. Gets the love of the chat for the man, my party poker team online teammate. Hope you had a great day, Jamie. How's it been going? Good, man. We've been doing some live poker sweating here. Doing some commentary on this Caribbean poker party that happened late 2019. And we're playing KO Series action tonight as well. Got one table on the side, ready to load up a few more in about 20 minutes. So that's the sitch, man. Anyone in the chat who hasn't checked out DW Stevie, make sure to give him a follow. Check him, um, check him out. Uh, great streamer. And uh, thanks for the love and support, man. Appreciate it. Ludo Bluffs, is it going to work? Probably not, man. Probably not. Oh, it does. Jokin makes the fold. Ludo with a bluff at the jack high gets it done, dude. Nice bluff, Ludo. Go on. Nice bluff. 110 million. Love a man just got back from dinner with my granny who turns 80 this Sunday. Well, it's fun. Oh, wow. That's a big one. The 8-0. That's a big birthday, man. Happy birthday to... To Grandma Stevie. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know uh, if your last I don't think your last name is Stevie. I don't think your grandma's last name is Stevie. <laughs> Grandma Stevie. It's a bit of a... Yeah, nope, that's not it, but it's a big birthday. All right, there it is. So it's been a really interesting table. I really enjoyed it. Wish my last name was Stevie, not going to lie. <laughs> true. True, I get what you're saying. <laughs> Only true DW Stevie fans would, would laugh at that joke. All right, chat. Jonathan folds the king six of diamonds under the gun. We are at 28 still. Almost finished the third day of play, the fourth day of tournament poker coverage. From the Caribbean Poker Party. 27 left now. It just ticked down, actually. I'll just move my face cam so you can see it. 27 left in the field here. Gregory is thinking about it. I mean, it's suited king. Raise it up on the button. That's my take on it, but the flick is in. The cards are gone, and it falls around to Ludo in the small blind. Young Stape, how much would you pay for a seat at this table? So what I would do is I would take the total prize pool left, right? And then I would divide it by the amount of chips, and then I'd figure out how much a chip was worth, basically. And then I would pay about even money. Because I think there is some weaker spots here. Maybe I'd pay a little bit more than even money. I think there's some mistakes that are being made in certain spots. People are playing a little crazy. But I think there's also a lot of players that are better than me at poker too. So I don't think... I'm not confident enough to be like, oh yeah, the best in the field. Like, put me in, I'll pay double. Like, that's not the case. Uh, I think it's quite a tough remaining 27 at this point, so... I'd pay about even money. Uh, <laughs> I would make it depend on whether I get chips or not. Otherwise, rather seat at the bar. Kappa. Kappa Kipo, man. Three clubs on the ends. Jokin has the best hand with the queen high, but does Ludo go for another bluff? Sitting on 109 million. Does he try one more time to steal these chips? 
Let's try and get a king high to fold, a queen high to fold. Oh my god, he does, and it's gonna work, man. Two million. Two million into three million. That makes a pot of five million. Two plus three equals five. Quick maths. Two plus two is four. Minus three is one. Quick maths. Joking. Thinking about something. But I think I uh, should have called the king queen and fooled this one. In my opinion. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Doesn't like let's go, though. Ludo bluffing up a storm. Stacking those chips, dude. It's chunks of chips. 112 million. That's a lot, man. Guys, what's the final on the Galphon challenge today? What happened? Who won what? Pulls up like 87 or something. 87K. Nice. Congrats to Phil Galphon, dude. It's nice for him to turn it around. Good stuff. Good stuff. I'm really happy for him. I, I just hope that, you know, he's able to fight back a little bit. And this is a good comeback in the challenge. William with the ace nine gonna raise it up. Joken in the small blind. Here's an all-in shove. C finally something for Joken here, man. Finally something for Joken to get it together. There's the all-in for the eights. Jonathan in the big blind is gonna fold the ace deuce. And then William's going to have a legitimate decision here, right? William has 27 million. Jokin's all in for 16 blinds. So William could call here. And by the book, probably makes a bit of money. Now, it's right on the edge. Stacks are pretty close together. We're getting close to, like, significant money jumps here. So that might start to creep in to William's decision in this spot. And he does fold. I think ace-10, you're in there. Ace-10, you're calling. Ace-9 is like that line. You're like, okay, do I hit the ace-9? Do I hit the ace-8s? And that's where it gets a little bit interesting. Had a lot of fun watching the game with you tonight. Online poker is legal in Switzerland, so that is the only sweat I get. Good luck and good night. Philosopher Stoned. Cheers, my friend. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'm going to be back tomorrow, uh, Friday and Saturday, for the final day if you want to come back. Um... And hang out. It'll be similar times as today for both. So just an FYI, but cheers, man. Have a good night. Thanks for hanging. Andres under the gun with the ace four. Whoa! Holy crap! Casino Daddy! You guys are insane! And I'm on no delay, so I get to properly thank the dads before everyone leaves, man. Chat, listen up. Casino Daddy. My number one stream on Twitch, dude. It's where I spend most of my time. I got like three main bays on Twitch. Casino Daddy, I sweat it every day. Highlights every day. See who got printer of the month. See who's crushing it. See who the ripper of the month is. It's just a great time. So I recommend anyone in my chat who hasn't checked out Casino Daddy do. They don't pay me for that endorsement. I just genuinely like the guys. I think they're awesome. Uh, anyone tuning into the stream for the first time, what's up? My name is Jamie Staples. I go by Poker Staples here on Twitch. We are watching a live tournament right now doing a bit of analysis. But in about 15 minutes, I'm going to restart the stream. I'm going to be playing some online tournaments. Trying to win all the money because Knockout Series is going on on Party Poker right now. 
So that's the situation. Welcome, welcome. If you want to hang out and chat, feel free. But if you're just a dad fan and you want to leave, that's fine too. Listen, I'm not going to hold it against you. I just want you guys to know I like you guys over there, okay? Got a good crew. The three bros, you know? Jesus, Aga. I've seen Zavera doing a little bit of action, man. Got Byron in the chat. You got some action, man. Yo, yo, have a good one tonight. Thank you, Casino Dad. Who was it tonight? What's the story, chat? Please tell me. But actually, don't spoil it if there's a big one. What's your personal favorite poker book you read when learning the game? Poker books go out of date really fast, man, because the game changes quickly. You know, it really changes quick. So, like, I read, like, Daniel Negreanu's Small Ball and, like, Super System, but I don't think they're the books to learn how to play poker today. I think, like, digital resources, online training sites and stuff, online videos is a lot better. Zavera was the host. Oh, nice. Sick. What's up, Zavera? Cheers, man. Thank you very much for the host. Good stuff, dude. I really like, so I, my routine with the dads, it's usually what I watch going to bed. It's usually my bedtime story. I go to their channel and I usually miss it live because I'm streaming or I'm working or whatever. But then I'll go to the video section and then the highlighted videos. And sometimes it tells you how much it wins in X. So I try and not see the title, but click so I can sweat it. But then sometimes it doesn't tell you an X and you can just click it and watch it anyways. But whenever there's like highlighted clips there, that's my dad routine, man. All right, we got a raise from William under the gun with eights. Now, Jokin, sitting on 20 million, it's about 20 big blinds, has a situation, man. A moment in time. Can go all in. Could also call. Could also fold, which is the tightest, man. William is making a... Or no, 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 no. Jokin is making a lot of folds here. So this is a little interesting. I don't like it but I can see the whole cards a lot easier a lot easier man alright we're going to a flop king 10-6 Andres has a flush draw here against Williams 8s and William only has 25 million so this could actually get in the middle let's see how it plays out here I think we only need to eliminate two more players before we're through the day today we're at 26 Everyone's guaranteed 40,000. And at 24, it jumps up to 45K, and we come back for day four coverage, which we're going to do tomorrow. So, yeah, 26 left. And Friday and Saturday, if you go back four hours in time right now, that's approximately when we're going to start the coverage tomorrow uh, and Saturday to finish the tournament. But Check, check on the flop. Six of diamonds in the turn. William checks again. Happy to, to keep it cheap, which is fine. Six on the river. Rip, man. Rip, chat. Rip. You're all devils, chat. That's how it goes. Six, six, six. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. In all seriousness, though, William loves his hands. If Andres bets, William has an easy call uh, up to this point. It's just... Pot's been kept small, and Andres is probably a little tilted that he missed his heart draw and he didn't get a chance to bluff, you know? What's up, Shikes? How's it going, man? Welcome, welcome. Five million bet from Andres. And call. Quick. Yep. Oh, just such a slam dunk. You love to see it. The quickest print all time. Nice one, eights. William up to 35 million. All right. Good, man. Good. So I think still at 26. Ludovic Gaelic, a party poker team pro from the country that I'm currently in right now, Scotland. And yeah, we, we don't have much time left. We only have a couple minutes left. I am going to start up the stream on the delay and and cut the live version so that we can play online tournaments tonight because I'm going to be playing a $320 buy in Omaha, $55 buy in Omaha, 
$109 buy-in no limit, a $530 buy-in no limit, and a $55 buy-in no limit. So that is the schedule tonight. And we're going to start with the delay so that we can play it properly and stream it in a second here. What's up, baby Elms? No, this may not mean a lot to you. It really improved my game a lot during the last two months, thanks to you. And yesterday, I won two tournaments. Get it done, bro. First time ever, I win two on the same day. Thanks for everything. Keep up, man. I love watching your streams. Thank you, dude. Really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. Joke and raise in the hijack. Bark on the dealer button. Ten and a half blinds. Loving his life. Ten of the ten. It's beautiful. Gonna get the chips in in a second. This is just, he's telling a story. Like, hey, man, you don't know if I got the dots. You don't know if I got, like, a close spot. He's just making sure he's balanced, you know? And now Jokin, it's pretty cheap. It's only eight million now, right? It's eight million to win fifteen million here, and the field is down to twenty-four. This is going to be the last hand. I'll move my my thing out of the way. We're down to twenty-four, so this is it. And a call. Ace three suited against tens. They're down to twenty-four, so everyone's guaranteed guaranteed forty-five k. This is going to be the last hand of the broadcast. Mark needs to dodge the ace, man, or the spades. And I like the spades. I'm feeling the spades. Ten of spades in the flop. Nine of spades. That's a flush draw. Top set against a flush draw here. Eight outs for Jokin immediately. Eight outs for Jokin. Ace on the turn isn't going to do it. Will not help. Needs a spade and only a spade, and it can't be the ace of spades or the eight of spades because that's a full house. Deuce of diamonds doesn't get it done. Mark with a big double up to end the day is going to be up to 24 million, and Jokin now sitting on just 10 million chips. That's it, bro. Just a little bit less, actually. So I believe that is going to be the end of the coverage on the day here. Let's just go get confirmation. We'll probably get a leaderboard here in a second of where people stand, etc. Yep, there it is. So tomorrow, we're going to be coming back with 24 left. Ludovic Gailik on a huge stack, 116 million, 97 blinds. Andres Nemeth, 50 big blinds. Gregory Baird, William Blaze, Mark Lange, Jonathan Kozel, who is a friend of the stream, by the way. I splash cranberries. And Jochen Blanco. So pretty interesting. There's going to be a completely different set tomorrow. It's going to be a completely different final 23. Um, and we're actually going to play down to a winner. 